Hey everyone, welcome to Diversity of Life. Uh, oh, we have an incoming transmission. Hey everyone, today I'll be going through my field work here on the pumpkin patch. I hope you join me. Well, isn't that exciting? For entomologists in the temperate region, the summer brings about some of the busiest and most enjoyable times of the year, because this is usually when fieldwork happens. For episode 24, I wanted to spend some time shedding some light on what I've been up to this summer. Typically, there are two categories of experimental setups, field experiments and laboratory experiments. Laboratory experiments are what you'd expect. You're in a controlled environment conducting research on things like captive bred animals or dealing with data, often indoors or in a greenhouse or in some other artificially constructed facility. Field experiments are those conducted in a natural setting. You're in the forest or jungle or desert, any environment you can imagine observing organisms in their natural habitat. These kinds of experiments are hard to replicate in a lab due to the space that you'd require or whether you're testing some kind of a large scale natural phenomenon. Or like in my case, where you're just trying to see what's in a given habitat. Field experiments have their set of challenges. It's hard to control for everything that could be influencing your system, making it hard to obtain concrete evidence. That's actually one of the reasons why climate change is so hard to prove, even though we know it exists. In my case, insects are only active when it's warm, meaning that I have a lot to do in a very small time frame. Bye bye summer. But all is not lost because I love this work and it's so important. Without biologists getting down and dirty in the field, we wouldn't know just how diverse the planet's animals and plants are. Thanks Linnaeus. Or have the understanding of evolution like we do. Thanks Charles Darwin and the Beagle's expeditions. These scientists historically went on some amazing journeys across seas and mountains to discover what was on the other side. I'm so lucky to be a part of that world. I've been to rainforests, untapped mountain habitats, ancient forests, all to learn what I can about the little guys on this planet. For my PhD, I'm a little more close to home, working with local farmers. I talked a little bit about it in this episode, albeit uh, quite quickly, <clears throat> but I'm excited to share exactly what I've been up to. For my project, I'm trying to see what ants are on common Ontario crops, what they're doing, and how pesticides we use impact them. So for the first summer of my PhD, I'm working with local farmers on squash and pumpkin crops. I've contacted local organic and conventional growers to sample soil and ants on their properties. I'll let myself take it away. Hey everyone. So today we're on my organic site doing field work. We're working with squash. That's Nico. Say hi, Nico. So what we're doing today is just kind of going through, putting into a transect, pitfall traps, and some bait. This is what my little field collection kit looks like. And so we're trying to collect as many ants as we can across these crops to see what they're doing and provide that information to the farmers. We're doing some soil samples as well, seeing what kind of soil chemistry is going on inside these plants. As you can see right now, these squash are flowering, and so we have all kinds of insects coming here trying to get the pollen. We got cucumber beetles showing up and trying to eat the pumpkin. We have honeybees coming and trying to get the nectar. Why the f Oh, never mind. Okay. The screen turned off for a second, but I think that's just part of it. Oh. Okay. Thanks, Aaron. <clears throat> anyway, my typical day is on these farms with Nico. I used a published method for the collection of soil dwelling arthropods like ants. Yes, that exists. It requires five hours of intensive field work, and this is what setting that up looks like. Oh, 
right, so we are all done. <clears throat> so with my sampling technique, we set out these pitfall traps. We put them in the ground with soap and water. The soap disassociates the surface tension so that anything that falls in will fall into the water and then we can get them out later. We do these bait traps of tuna and cookie. The tuna is a high protein source, which the ants really love the smell of. And then the cookies is just super sweet. And the ants will eat that stuff up. And we do six down a 50 meter transect. It's just kind of the standard technique for where, what we do. Put them in every 10 meters. And you're done. And so with this sampling technique, we'll be out here for five hours. We'll mostly wait around and uh, let the pitfall traps do their work. At uh, an hour in, we'll usually do the bait traps, check them to see if anything's on them. And then a couple hours in, we'll do an hour of active collecting. And that's just going out between the rows, picking up any ants we see and putting them into a vial. <clears throat> and then at the end of five hours, we check everything, pull or anything that's in the pitfall traps into a vial, and then we head on out. So, see ya. Yeah, you heard that right. I use tuna and cookies. I've actually gotten mocked for the part in the documentary I'm in where I talk about that. It looks like I'm a forest troll just feeding on tuna and cookies. Cue scene. Ants are definitely my passion. Oh gosh. I've already found all kinds of cool stuff this summer. I found ants nesting in the root systems of these pumpkin crops. That's never been documented before. And I've also found that these ants are cleaning the crops of nasty pests, like the cucumber beetle. This means that they could be providing beneficial pest regulation services on these pumpkin crops. Go ants! And it's not just ants that I'm finding while doing field work. I'm finding all kinds of insects, like these bleppy bees, and caterpillars, and all kinds of stuff. Where do I go from here? Well, I have a lot to do. One thing is I'm collecting ant queens for laboratory experiments. I want to test how colonies react to various pesticides commonly applied to these crops. This will help inform us if we are accidentally killing these ants that are controlling pests on these crops. Maybe the pesticides we're using are counterproductive, killing the things that are controlling the pests? No one knows, and that's what I'm trying to find out. I hope you all enjoyed hearing a bit more about what I'm up to, and actually getting to see me in the field. If you want to see more content like this, let me know in the comments below. As lab work starts to happen more and more, I'm thinking about getting some footage of my ant colonies and bee colonies in the lab, so stay tuned! Thanks so much for watching. If you liked what you heard here, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, subscribe. And if you want to see more of my furry antics, follow me on Twitter. Thanks so much, Nico, for volunteering with me this summer. It means a lot, and it's a lot of help. You rock. He's one of my best friends, and you should drop him a line and say hi. Although, uh... You did make filming this episode a little bit more challenging. <sighs> Roll credits. See you later. Hey, field sites right now. I'm today on a <laughs> yo. <laughs> Don't do that. Crop. We're working with uh, squash. <laughs> Why are you doing that? <laughs> you. Natural phenomenon. Or like in my case, where you're just trying to see what's in a given habitat. Field experiment has a set of challenges. It's hard to control for.